Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. It didn't take long after the Wright brothers' historic first flight for someone to strap weapons onto an airplane. Thus, the fighter aircraft was born. Initially, airplanes were used for reconnaissance. But by World War II, newly developed fighters were engaging in dogfights with one another in the air. And dropping bombs on enemy targets on the ground. This escalated during World War II, when planes saw significant improvements in speed, range, and firepower. Soon after, the concept of air superiority emerged, emphasizing the importance of controlling the skies during both war and peacetime. Side Clover, delete altitude restriction. Today, Aircraft like the F-16, Su-27, and F-35 cost millions of dollars and utilize some of the most advanced technology to engage in both attack and defensive missions. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing produce fighter aircraft for the United States Air Force, as well as allies spread out all around the world. As the planes have become more complex and sophisticated, production methods have also had to advance. When developing the latest fighter for the US, the F-35 Lightning II, Northrop Grumman coordinated with a series of small businesses to develop entirely new advanced assembly methods. This new blueprint technology projected a guide onto the plane's surface so that assembly technicians knew which fasteners to use and where. This proved to be a massive time saver and helped reduce costs on what was already the most expensive fighter jet in history. So in the manufacturer of the F-35, we use tens of thousands of fasteners of several hundred different types to put the aircraft together. And every time you have a mechanic that is referencing a blueprint, um, referencing it two, three, four, five times to make sure he's got the right type of fastener in the right hole, um, in the right spot, that costs time. In fact, during the production of the F-35, Northrop Grumman had to develop a completely new integrated assembly line. Developed in collaboration with Detroit-based KUKA Systems Corporation's Aerospace Division, this advanced manufacturing line incorporates robotics and automation to enhance capacity and assembly capabilities, allowing for precision and efficiency that are challenging to achieve with manual methods, drastically reducing production times across the board. These innovations don't stop with the assembly process. Lockheed Martin also partners with BAE Systems, a UK-based company, to test the airframe of the newly designed F-35s. In this massive system, planes are subjected to the same strains as they would encounter over 24,000 flight hours. This necessitates transporting the aircraft by truck, crane, boat, and plane using only the most secure techniques. Once they are ready for delivery, Lockheed utilizes various methods to get them to their customers. This includes having pilots fly them directly to the target location. with significant planned stops for refueling. 
In other cases, the F-35s may be transported by a large cargo aircraft or ships. This method ensures the safety and security of the aircraft during transit and is particularly useful for countries that are far from the production facilities. Transporting by sea or air also allows for the delivery of multiple aircraft at once, which can be more efficient. At the Marine Corps Air Station in Iwakuni, Yamaguchi, Japan, an airbase is set to receive a fleet of MV-22 Ospreys, which are being transported by boat. The Osprey is a multi-mission tilt-rotor military aircraft. with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. Developed by Bell Helicopter and Boeing, it represents a unique blend of helicopter and airplane capabilities. With its rotors able to tilt to convert the aircraft from a vertical to a horizontal position. The aircraft was also designed for easy transport and storage. Its wings and rotors can fold against the fuselage, drastically reducing the Osprey's width. This is critical, as the aircraft are often used aboard aircraft carriers and other vessels, where space is often limited. Typically, Allied forces will engage in strategic training exercises after a new aircraft is delivered. This ensures pilots, ground crews, and maintenance tanks have all the knowledge necessary to employ the aircraft properly. Transporting helicopters by plane is a common method utilized by militaries worldwide. Like the MV-22, most modern helicopters are designed with rotors that can fold into a straight line with the fuselage, allowing them to be easily stored in the cargo hold of large planes like the C-5 Galaxy. This approach has several notable benefits. First, these planes are often designed for long distance travel whereas helicopters are not. Using a single cargo plane can drastically reduce the amount of fuel and resources necessary to move the aircraft over international borders. At the same time, flying a helicopter to its destination can put significant wear and tear on the aircraft, especially over long distances. Transporting helicopters inside cargo planes protects them from weather, reduces engine hours, and preserves their mechanical integrity. Both airplanes and airplane parts are also transported using these massive cargo aircraft. However, as both civilian and military planes have grown in size, aerospace companies have had to develop new, larger, and more innovative designs. One prime example is the Aerospace Line Super Guppy. First introduced in 1965, the Super Guppy boasts a unique, bulbous fuselage that allows it to hold a variety of oversized parts. The engineers also designed the fuselage with hinges, 
which allow it to swing open for easy loading and unloading of massive cargo. At 143 feet long and with a wingspan of 156 feet, the Super Guppy is not the largest plane in the world. Yet its capacity is drastically increased by its extended cargo hold. Over the years, it has been used by NASA to move rocket parts and transport decommissioned commercial and military planes. Unfortunately, it's not always possible to deliver a plane directly to its destination via air. In such cases, both private and military organizations have had to come up with some very ingenious solutions. Most of these involve trucks that have been specifically modified to tow heavy and oversized loads. In such situations, the wings typically have to be removed, as do the engines and other sensitive parts. The truck driver will also require both the front and rear guide car, which can help spot potential problems, guide the truck through difficult turns, and aid in clearing traffic. The same process is required to transport certain new aircraft parts, such as wings and tail sections. Because even the pieces can cost millions of dollars, aerospace companies are careful to ensure they get where they're going with minimal cost and maximum safety. Boeing is one of the world's largest and most successful aerospace companies. having produced both military and commercial aircraft since 1917. Not only does Boeing have a number of divisions for its various products, but it also has more than a dozen subsidiaries spread out all over the world. As such, it's rare for an aircraft to be assembled in one single place thus necessitating a variety of transport methods, including plane, train, and truck. As a result of this constant need to move oversized parts, Boeing drivers have developed exceptional skills. Some of these aircraft pieces can measure well over 100 feet long, yet they still need to travel over the same roads used by civilian traffic. Specialized truck designs with swivel beds aid in the process. These trucks are fitted with a specialized steer car, allowing a second driver to control the rear wheels, thus minimizing the chances of incidents. Boeing frequently produces its commercial aircraft on contract. This means that when each plane is assembled, the company already knows which airline or shipping group will receive the finished product. As a result, each plane will be painted and decorated to suit the final airline's brand. So even though the planes themselves may be the same, a 747 designed for Qantas will look nothing like a 747 designed for Atlas Air. This makes the delivery of the very first plane in an order a major event. In most cases, the finished aircraft will simply drive directly onto the tarmac from the final assembly line, taxi onto the runway, and take off toward its new owners. It's a dramatic yet practical way to make delivery of a multi-million dollar investment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.